and to do more parts the earth, all desires the earth, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse all thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from the letter of St Paul to the Galatians, the fourth chapter, beginning to read at the twenty-first verse. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Thanks be to God. chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, 
which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lift up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread, that these may eat? This he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them might take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise to the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the crumbs that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. A few weeks ago, a woman called Peggy Montgomery died aged 102. It's most unlikely you've ever heard of her. But for a few short years, between 1920 and 1925, she was possibly the most famous woman on the planet. Her father, Jack, was a cowboy in California a mean hand with a lasso. When Hollywood came into being, there was great demand for real cowboys to play fictional cowboys in Wild West films. So Jack signed up. One day he went into the studio office to collect his wages, accompanied by his daughter Peggy, then aged 18 months. A film producer with the glorious name Fred Fishback spotted her and realised she would make an excellent co-star in films he was making about Brownie the Wonder Dog. So he signed her up there and then. Her winning smile made her an instant success. Soon she was appearing in films in which she was the sole star, none of which have survived. And not only was she globally famous, but she also earned ginormous pots of money. Her parents bought a mansion on Beverly Hills, where her neighbours included Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks, the, in fact all the great stars of the silent era. But paradoxically, in acting a child so perfectly, she lost her own childhood. The studios worked her eight hours a day, giving her pep-up pills when she was flagging, and she even had to perform her own stunts which included being dragged off a moving cart and even escaping from a genuinely burning building. Unfortunately, Jack, the dad, became horribly greedy, demanding ever higher wages from the studios. And eventually, in 1925, all the studios got together to drop her. And that was that. Aged only six, her career was over. Her parents refused to accept this and continued to live the high life in their Beverly Hills mansion. So at the age of 14, Peggy was bankrupt. The next several days, decades were miserable, having various financial difficulties, dismal affairs and suffering a prolonged breakdown. But eventually, in her old age, she started writing biographies of later child stars, which proved modestly successful. Now, a few child stars have gone on to lead satisfactory lives, Hayley Mills being an example, roughly my contemporary. 
but most, like Peggy and like Judy Garland, for example, seem to have been ruined by the experience. Indeed, as with Peggy, the film producers turned Judy Garland into a virtual drug addict. Yet despite this trail of sadness, child stars have always attracted a particular special kind of devotion. The ideal child stars like Peggy and Julie and Haley have combined exceptional good looks with lily-white innocence. And so they embody how every mum and dad wants their children to be, but knows they never will be. Today, Mothering Sunday, we celebrate mothers and children. And we can thank God that the bond between mother and child, indeed father and child, is one of the timeless facts of human nature. There's not even the remotest possibility that we will wake up one morning and find that the bond has dissolved. But a few days ago, we did wake up to a changed world. A world where, amongst many other things, family life will have to be conducted differently. The closing of schools will have a large enough effect, but it will be made worse by the fact that grannies and granddads, like my wife and me, can't pitch in to help. Like lots of other old people, I want to be brave, continuing to care for my grandchildren with no thought for my own health. But that's not the point. By getting ill, and using up scarce NHS resources, I would be putting other people's lives at risk. In fact, this means I'll have to learn, or be brave enough to learn, something else. I must get to grips with seeing my grandchildren via the internet. But despite this re restriction, I'm finding that my grandchildren mean more to me than ever. This crisis is forcing each of us to reflect on what is important and what is unimportant. That holiday in the sun you were planning seems strangely trivial, as do those delicious chocolates that the wretched panic buyers have already stripped from the shelves. And as for any career ambitions that may linger, they seem like so much dust. By contrast, children and grandchildren are beacons of hope. They are the future. I don't need to believe that my granddaughter is a new Hayley Mills to regard her as my child star, along with my three grandsons. So if you're a youngish couple wondering whether to have children, but anxious about bringing children into such a precarious world, well, my advice is go for it. And besides, remember Louis Armstrong's encounter with the Pope. Louis lamented to the Pope that he and his wife were unable to have children, but added, we sure have a lot of fun trying. One day, as we keep reminding ourselves, the present crisis will pass. When it does, let us remember what we have learnt about the relative importance of different things, with the bond of love between mothers and children being amongst the most important. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made down and was crucified also for us and upon his side. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church. And especially today, we pray for Vivian Burridge, Linda Bowles, Kevin Reed, Conan Rebat, Christina Pettifer, Vanda Elby, Bishop Stephen Conway, Andrew Gardner, and especially worship, we pray for all those suffering the virus at this time. Almighty and ever-living God, who by the Holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. <clears throat> and grant that all they who confess thy holy name May bring the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant, Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy great goodness to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. 
pray that this my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May, may the, the Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands to the praise and glory of his holy name, to our benefit and that of the Holy Spirit. Ye do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your heart, <coughs> and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and aware of our manifold sins of wickedness, which we from time to time most previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do ever to repent, and are heartily sorry that these are mysteries. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever and hereafter serve and plead thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them in heart repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet right in our bounty of duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And his institute and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's own institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, <clears throat> which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. And to grant that all we, who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ the commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Amen. Yeah. 
ever living God, we most heartily thank thee, the thou art our safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food from the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as assurance thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. And also heirs who hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue to do those good works as thou art prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.